look at all of this stuff. On the way back from Scotland last week, we popped in to see my mum and sister who live in Cumbria. And my sister fortuitously was having a bit of a clear out of all of her old materials. And she knows that I'm on a bit of an exploration spree at the moment because I've signed up to a few illustration courses and I'm kind of exploring new, new avenues and just exploring my own style a little bit more. And my goodness, she has, she has really, really given me some lovely things to look at. I am going to open these, but first I have to get ready for a market, which is tomorrow. So this is going to have to wait. Insert a very quick market time lapse before we can get back to opening these delicious boxes. Okay, I think you're wonky. Let me just try and straighten up the wonk a second. Who knows if that's better? But I'm back home. Yesterday was an event and it was a real quiet event and I think I'm probably going to knock that event on the head in the future because it's a lot of effort setting up for a market. If you're interested in market vlogs, 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 uh, I'll pop some links to some of, my, some of my market vlogs in the description. But really what you're here to see is me unboxing a box of art supplies from my sister. So let's go. First of all, my sister, when she was clearing out, had given me these two books. So it's three, 365 days of art and 365 days of drawing. And so far, at a glance, these look like great little plomps, prompts. Um, it's too pretty of a book for me to, to fill up, but I might scan pages or, or do do the activities in my own sketchbook. So each each page, it's got a prompt for you to do. So filling in the colour wheel on that one. Uh, number seven, draw the shoes that you're wearing today. Number eight, what's hiding in the reeds? Like something to step you out of your comfort zone. And thereby, Lorna Scobie. Um, I will have a look on, if you watched one of my last videos, you'll know that I've signed up to um, an affiliate scheme with Jackson's Art. Now they don't, they don't pay me to say any nice things about them. I signed up to the affiliate scheme because I'm really impressed with their range and they have been making real strides with, with cutting down their plastic, really. So um, I decided to set up with the affiliates program. If any of the things that I've got from my sister are on Jackson's, I'll pop a link down below. So if you're interested in any of the things that you see, if I can link you on Jackson's Affiliates, I will link you and then you'll be helping me if you do click through and buy anything from there. No obligation, no pressure. I'm not being paid to say this and you don't have to do it, you know, whatever. One thing to mention with the affiliate scheme is if it's your first purchase from Jackson's, they do give you 10% off for clicking through my link. And if it's not your first, um, your first purchase from Jackson's, it doesn't cost you anything and you'll be helping me out. So these are by Lorna Scobie. And they look quite good for just prompting some sketchbook practice, which is always good. So I'll put those on the floor because I know there's loads of other stuff to look through. Mm. <laughs> this is amazing. So much stuff. So I have this clear pencil case. That will come in very handy. A big pencil case like this would be great for putting my sketchbook and my materials in. Give that a go. Now these aren't art supplies. These are little door handles which she gave me because she knows I'm crafty and I might have use for them. Oh, so this is uh, Cranfield traditional etching inks in bone black. So it's a, it says it's an oil-based etching ink for fine art in tal. I've never heard of this before. In taglio printmaking, made with artist's quality pigments and polymerized linseed oil. Oh, it looks like it's been unopened. 
I'm gonna have to investigate and find out what to do with that. But yes, yeah, so that's Cranfield traditional ink. Some fluorescent oil pastels. Fluorescent blue and green. And some more Pentels. Deborah, when she said when she got these, she said she got them because they were called XXL pastels. So she thought they were gonna be big chunky things, but it ends up that they are pretty much the same size. I suppose actually when you compare them they are pretty much chunkier than than these pastels but yeah she was expecting them to be big chunky things but they weren't they're not even opened so I'm gonna have fun experimenting with new materials so this will be great all the colors there some more oil pastels Sennelier oil pastels so it looks like we've got quite a few quite a few colors it's like a real nice consistency though Hmm, I'm gonna have fun playing with those, I think. I'll have a play with all of these on a like test swatch in a minute. Just wanted to show you. If you watched my last video, you'll know that I got a few, not my last video, my video before last, I got a few watercolors from Jackson's um, and I had an old Winsor & Newton watercolor set. And these, these are the Cotman watercolors, which were for my old watercolor set. Oh, apart from I didn't have a black one because uh, I normally mix my blacks with burnt umber and uh, indigo. And staying on a theme, I can see what I've got here. Ah, I love, I don't know, is it just me? I love watercolour sets that, oh sugar. I love watercolour sets that people have used. Um, these colours, the mixing palettes, it just gets me really excited for creating stuff. So I'm gonna make a swatch for these later so I know what colours are, are what and in what order. Got a little board. Ah, this is a watercolour. And my sister actually uh, visited um, the Florence Printmaker, the, hang on, where is it? Florence Printmakers, yeah. So it's, it's a place in Egremont um, and they make their own pigments. And this is called Egremont Red, oh my goodness more oh she did tell me about these these are kuretake watercolors and they're meant to be really good watercolors she does say that they need to be spritzed with water before you use them i don't have a spritz currently so i wonder what i could use instead but yeah i'll have to make a swatch for these as well and see see what's what oh, we've got a gold in there too that'll be interesting to play with oh an xl in charcoal uh, royal lang nickel <gasps> say they are what are they they graphite look like graphite so you got 4b yeah they're graphite blocks oh, lovely i know what these are they're charcoal pencils yes classic i've already got a set of these and i love them so they will be very well used willow charcoal my favorite kind of charcoal i've uh, got some paper so an acrylic pad like a sheet of uh, acrylic paper so it's really thick so you can use thick paints on it wow Deborah really did not enjoy pastels so she's given me all of her favorite castell pastels too oh it is soft pastels oh they're almost chalky oh they are <laughs> soft pastels they're not oil pastels wonderful I love soft pastels oh great excited for this. The bag itself would have been enough to bring excitement to me because it's big enough for A3 sketchbooks. I could have done with that when I was packing for Lewis. First in the bag of sibling love and goodness. I think I know what this is. <laughs> a bunch. A bunch. And when I say a bunch, I mean a bunch of lino cutting tools. I have a couple of lino cutting tools already, but I don't think I've got any of these ones. And a little bag. <laughs> she's given me her dough and pencil roll. And she's filled it full of stuff. I know what this is. 
this and uh, this will definitely be on the Jackson's website because it is Jackson's own. It's a pencil, uh, what do you call it? Pencil folio? Basically, it's, <laughs> she's got stuff in it already. Um, it's basically uh, a big old book where you can store all of your pencils. So if I'm going away on another trip, I can put all my pencils laid out like this rather than having to uh, go through a, a pencil case or fill up a big pencil case. <gasps> so I've got so, so many pencils and I've got some fluorescent ones as well. Gouache, you know, I was looking for white gouache and I got it in a little tiny tub. She's got me a massive gouache in white. I love gouache. In here, I've got my much loved Eco Lines. Oh, and she's given me this one, Iridescent Bright Gold. Still a bit of liquid to it. It looks like it's dried up a little. I wonder if there's anything I can add to that to make it not gloopy anymore, to make it more liquid. Let me know in the comments if you know, is there anything that I could add to this that I'm likely to have or likely to easily get. It's a Liquitex Professional Ink Iridescent Bright Gold um, to make it liquid again because it's... I can dab it but I can't pipette it if that makes sense. So let me know in the comments is there anything that I can use? And in here, and in here are some big chunky pencils. They're called Stabilo Woodies. Lovely big chunky pencils just to get some good mark making going in your illustration. She's also, because she's lovely, given me a sharpener for the woody as well, because obviously this isn't going to fit in a normal pencil sharpener. Right, this is the last bit of the woody bag. Nothing else in there. Great bag though. Let's see what's in here. Portable water posh, watercolours. I remember when she got these, she, because um, my sister's got a YouTube channel as well, I'll link her in the description, but she said she was going to do a little challenge with these and she never did. But they're pretty cute watercolours. Maybe I'll carry the mantle of this watercolour challenge and see what I can create with this set of watercolours. We've got Ecoline brushes. <laughs> I've got washi tape. Apparently it's a pastel holder. I've got some smudges. Copy markers. I've got some pencil holders. This is a Jackson lead holder. Got some Posca pens. Highlighter pens. Watercolours in tubes. So I'm going to tidy these away, find some places for them. But I'm going to get a big piece of paper out first and do some swatches. <laughs> sister um, while they're drying I'm going to close up the room and I'm gonna have some washing out and just see something other than my studio for a little while maybe have some lunch but I'll be back 
So you blink and then all of that will be over and you'll, you can just carry on, okay? So blink, hands down back. I, before I started filming, sat down and just did 10 minutes of working on um, Jaguar from memory. So I looked at a load of photographs and then um, smash it down onto my big A3 sketch pad. Um, because I'd like to do a Jaguar illustration. They've been on my mind for a little while. So I thought I'd try that. I've got pastel on my hands. I'm probably gonna end up smearing it all over my face. So I'm gonna put this this away. Um, let's test out this little watercolor set. And then my pastels. I'll get my pastels swatched in this big in this big thing. Um, and then I think I'm nearly, nearly at the end of testing out all of the materials. Those pastels, oh, there is a world of difference between them. My favourite so far, just for the pure feel of it, are these ones, the Sennelier ones. They're like butter. None of them are as buttery as these Sennelier ones. I want to do some rough colour illustrations of the Jaguar. So these are some of the Jaguars that I did. I did those in pastel as well, in black pastel. I want to colourise those. So um, I was thinking, grabbing some different materials and just having a mess around, like making it real mess. No, no neat illustrations here. Uh, making a real mess and just having a go and seeing if I can overlay some of these new materials. I'm ridiculously pleased with how that turned out. Like I say, it is a messy sketchbook and I've got no pretensions of this being a finished piece, but it's closer to a finished piece than I thought it might be. Um, I'm trying to get back to drawing a little bit more instinctively. Uh, a few years ago, I was so uptight when I was drawing. Um, hang on, let me plug you in. Yeah, so a few years ago, I was so uptight when I was drawing that uh, I ended up not drawing anything and this last, well this year, 2023, I've really started to embrace mess and also just the process. The process is what's important, the end result isn't. And as soon as I started, the end result is important, but my, my, my point is, if I just focus on the end result, I'm not going to experiment with the process. And if I don't experiment with the process, I'm not going to find something that works. I'm going to think about it too much beforehand and assume I know what works and go with that, which is what I've done for such a long time. So yeah, I'm really liking, I'm really liking this. I don't know what for, print, cartoon character? I don't know, but I love it. And those Sennelier, these oil pastels, I think I'm converted. I think I'm converted. <laughs> but anyway, I am going to take a picture of this for Instagram now. And I'm going to leave this video here because I fear it might have been a bit of a rambling one. If you've got anything you'd like me to cover in future videos, like, I don't know, colour theory, or you've got some ideas maybe for things that I can draw, in my YouTube videos, like a little challenge, pop your ideas in the comment section below because I do read them and 
yeah if you've got any ideas of if you want to do like a um a viewers challenge you can you can challenge me to draw something just so i've got an i've got an excuse guys to experiment with all this new materials so yeah get your thinking cap on and challenge me in the comments but until next time see you later